welcome back to my youtube channel if you're not new to my channel don't forget to like this video subscribe and hit that post notification bell if you guys want to be alerted when this is average book okay okay so from bad bitch to bad bitch today we're gonna have a fun little video okay but there's a little bit of spice to it if you guys want to be for real i'm gonna be talking about you guys can tell by this by the freaking title Ugh. and i haven't even gotten into the book right yet okay but y'all you guys have not seen by the title of the video today i am going to be talk talking to you guys about a little bit of tea that has that was happening um a little bit of tea that has happened to me okay that's not over you guys i'm keeping it freaking short to meet like me literally outside the bitch okay <laughs> so i'm gonna be telling you guys story time of when and how i got kicked out when i was six well no but wrong fucking one that was last night <laughs> bitch. um that's the, the story time of how i was homeless for like two months and how that affected me okay so for a lot of people i'm just gonna start by saying that there's a lot that goes into um there's a lot that goes into life. There's a lot that, you know, financial stability, there needs to be, you know, mental stability, there needs to be social stability, there needs to be a family stability, and all of those things I was lacking at that time when I was 16, okay? So I was working at Taco Bell when I was 16, but at the time, it was me, my brother, and my sister all living in an apartment. So me and my sister were the main twins. And my brother, he's like 21 at this point, okay? So all of us, after my last story time, if you guys want to go watch that one, that one is going to make this video make so much more sense. So stay tuned. But because <laughs> this is going to get really crazy, I laugh because honestly, I feel like I, I'm still trying to find a way to deal with how it affected me now. And I feel like that, that's kind of my trauma response sometimes is to like laugh at something that happening um, I don't know how to properly deal with it yet but we're getting there so I am just gonna tell you guys that to start off with it I was working my sister was working and my brother was working the rent was $1,200 to pay and you know short but sweet I'm telling you guys we just weren't making the cut okay we just weren't making enough to provide for ourselves we were making enough for rent but we were literally lacking food so it was kind of just like not a good situation my brother gets an eviction notice on the door and that means that you're not paying your rent and basically you need to get out for those people who don't know what that means that, you know you have this amount of time to pay and if you don't you're not so we literally did not have enough to pay around this time well because we knew at this time we were going to be uh, we were talking about our options i remember sitting with that me and we literally me and my sister were talking like what are we going to do you know you know our mom doesn't have a home to live in down here she just came back to where we were previously at Oklahoma, and we were just trying to talk about like where are we gonna go what are we gonna do because you know she's not gonna be able to do that for us at that no. time my brother's not and we don't have anywhere to go so at that point no. we were kind of just like understanding at this point that we're gonna stay homeless and for this time we did not know how long we did not know how long you guys like we literally did not know how long so um i'm kind of looking at the camera more you guys because <laughs> i feel like i'm just not looking at the camera but i feel weird like just like straight at it like <laughs> but anyway so before we get like into the real key and how everything is i'm just giving you guys that background that we knew we were going to be homeless because we could not pay the rent so at this point you guys we would like we have to fucking like we have to get out of here um and find somewhere to go and could not find somewhere to go and so from that point it was the next day my mom had said you know we're gonna go stay with my friend for a little while that was a bad situation i talked about it in a previous video i don't know if i want to talk about it again um but i am gonna put the video just because we're gonna keep it real um because that's how we are and uh i'm just gonna give a little trigger warning right now if you guys are sensitive to drug use and you guys are sensitive to um 
any triggering <laughs> like subjects, mm -hmm. it may come up oh, after this. So I'm just gonna stop right here. We're gonna get to the fun part and then we're gonna get down to the real business. So wait. Before I say this too, please make sure you are over 18. Please make sure you're over the age of 21. And if you are not, please get the fuck out. Okay, just be careful. Okay. <laughs> um, because again, I'm gonna repeat this. I'm not gonna have my videos taken down. I do not promote the do use of any um, oh. mild um, illegal Lula. substance. Stop. I do not promote or condone the use of drugs or anything any alcohol none of that please make sure you are of age before that you keep watching this video okay <laughs> so anyways let's get to the fun part don't touch the I tv you can stand there you don't touch the tv okay and there's more to come if we need to but for right now no. i'm chilling so y'all i'm gonna make out a little drink i'm gonna show you guys what i've been doing and what i came up with and i thought this was so like yeah. it gets you fucking where you need to be in, but no. it also is not like yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean, like, or if you, you know, when you smell that like one alcohol, and then like the ton of flashbacks just be coming back to you because you're like, that's literally how I feel with these. But like, if you're not gonna like watch, no, Layla, no. Yeah. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. So first thing that you're gonna wanna do is one. These things are kind of always hard to open. Top roof, for sure. So we're gonna pour like that much. We're gonna pour like that much. Oh, look at that! That's so cute. We're gonna have to get it, get that in there, like for the freaking video. Okay, oh, but yeah. we're not there yet. So we're gonna open the panel. No, lay like come on. The match with her, so you know, freaking over the yeah, My nails are like non-existent. But yeah, you know, you know. we're just trying. Oh shit! Lemonade. Okay, so this one's a little bit more like it's kind of busy. Or then we're gonna pour that on top, and then that right there. Like, just because this is gonna be fucking crazy, so fucking buckle up, grab your snack, grab your drink, make sure you're patient, or grab one of you guys like. Let's do this. Cheers, Mother. Okay. Keep it coming. Because this is going to be fucking crazy. Okay. I'm going to keep going oh, while I'm telling you guys what happens next. Eternity later. I'm just gonna get right into where we left off. So, so at that point we were literally like, okay, we're gonna be homeless. At this point, we had to get our dogs because um, if you don't have an address on file, then they can't have you working for them anymore. So that's what I was told, and that's why I could not work at Taco Bell anymore. And also for hygiene reasons, they want to make sure that you have somewhere to. Obviously, be hygienic, and I, at that time, I did not. And you guys, I was not at that time because it's what it sounds like. And you're homeless, you don't have no bed to go sleep in, you don't have no warm food, you don't have a fireplace to put your feet by, you don't have none of that. And for some time, honestly, I was kind of really upset, but it was more kind of like survival mode. It was more kind of like, like, okay, this is what this is gonna. Honestly, at that time, I felt like I deserved that, and yeah. it's not because I did anything bad, and it took me a while to, you know, think of that, but it was because I lacked so much love for my parents, um, never knew my dad, from my mom, at least, and from just family members, you know, uh, I felt like I deserved that, because I never had, I never had that, and I really was like, oh my god, like, me and my sister, really felt the same on those because we, and we didn't realize it till later, but, you know, till now, you know, as adults, um, I haven't realized that till now, but what I, what it was so crazy at the time being 16 is that I was ready for whatever came at me, and I'm not trying to say this thing, I'm sorry to lose my spot, but I used to be so, like, 
Like, yo, what's up? You know, like, from the place that we were living at, we could, and I'm talking real for I'm not talking like, you know, let's see, let's be on full now. Like, you could not act like a bitch, or else you were a bitch, and you were gonna get, you could get raped, you could get kidnapped, you could get, um, talked to by the wrong people, and being how vulnerable I was at the time, it was scary, because, you know, me and my sister said, you know, we're gonna be living here in this hotel, because with what money that my mom did no. have, that's where we did go later on. But we were still homeless because there would be like Sundays where we would not be able to afford the hotel. So we would have to go sleep outside. My sister would go stay with one of her friends. But, uh, you know, I was just kind of winging it and and it was hard. It was hard. I can, I can hear it in my voice right now as I'm telling this because... It was fucking hell. When I met my boyfriend, I realized that I did not have to take that persona with me. And so I started wearing, you know, at the time I was wearing baggy clothes, sweats, thrifted shoes that were like men's. I was putting my hair up back. I was like, I looked like a guy. You guys, I really did. I looked like a guy. There was nothing wrong. Now it's like, now that I'm even looking at myself, I'm like, girl, like, it's okay to be in your software era now. It's okay to fucking like leave that behind because that's not what I wanted to do at that time, but it was to put on that, it was to make it more believable that like, don't fuck with me, like I'm not with that tough person, don't fuck with me, and it worked. It worked while we were there, it worked. But as soon as I left and I met my boyfriend, like there was an understanding that was like, I don't have to remain acting like that. So I started wearing heels and I used to say, I'm never gonna wear that, that shit. I used to say, I'm never gonna wear dresses. I used to say, I'm never going to wear this stuff. Like, I used to say, I don't want my nails done. Like, you know, I've gotten my nails done now. I used to not do my hair, like, put work and effort into myself to to feel beautiful because I was just like, I want to look scary. I want to look like, so people don't fuck with me around, you know, the place that we were saying that. And this hotel that we were saying that was so, like, it's known to be a drug hotel. So... We were careful. We barely left our room, and when we did, it was to get the fuck out because it was dragging yeah. us, like, literally up the wall. It was a literal four-square room, and it wasn't a studio apartment. It literally had a toilet, a bathroom. It's somewhere that you stay, like, on a traveling trip, and you literally write or yelp the next day saying that you found bugs and roaches and all the fucking other shit, okay? So obviously you can see why two 16 year old girls that are supposed to be in school aren't and they're staying in a hotel and they have to fucking like live here and protect themselves because no one else is going to do that. Okay? So that was me and my sister. That's what we had to do. So my sister had actually gotten a request from somebody that she could go stay with them. And I told her that's fine. You know, I was sad because I was like, I don't want to be alone and we've never been apart from each other that long. But I was like, you know what, if you're going to be safe, that's all I care about. And if you're going to be careful and you're texting me every day, then you text me every day and tell me that you're okay. But I'm going to go and at that time, I didn't have nobody. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go and I'm going to tuck this shit out. I'm going to thug it out. Like I do. That's what I was doing. So I yeah. thugged it out. Like, where I think about when someone says like, oh, like, like you were homeless. Like when I tell them that, they don't really think that. You know, like by looking at me, they're like, what the fuck? Some people I've had that even have said to my face, they don't believe me. And it's kind of an, it's really insulting because it's like, of course you don't, but why the fuck would I ever lie about that shit? So I'm going to tell you something that my experience, I even have pictures and videos of me, um, just under a tarp, like how you would put a blanket over your head and just be on your phone. That's what I did for a really long time. And this was too much. This was too much. And so, you know, my sister was staying with friends. She tried to come pick me up sometimes if I told her if it was getting too bad. She would say, <clears throat> she would say, Chloe, you can take me any time. Like, I'll take you any time. But well, I didn't want to be a burden, so I didn't expect anybody. I'm so sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. It gets me because we're 16 and we're supposed to be in school. And I was sleeping and I was sleeping behind my school. And I was sleeping behind the school with my mom and her boyfriend on a white sheet. And we would use our duffel bags as our pillows. And it just got too cold. I mean, it was the day before Halloween. Not always looking at her this. And I was like, this shot before I get into it. 
Halloween, I get invited to this Halloween party by, uh, from this guy, and I ended up being like, no, I can't, I can't go because they, you know, uh, I was friends straight up, you know, I was friends with him, and I said, you know, I can't go because I, I don't have anywhere to stay right now, and he made all of someone to stay, but I said, no, like I said, at this point, I cut off, like, everybody because I didn't want them to know I was homeless, and I didn't want them to offer me their home because I felt like such a burden that I can't accept, felt like I deserved to be where I was at, but I didn't, and I know that now, but at the time, I did not. So one time, and I, this is what I remember is, I put on so many layers of clothing. I put on my grandma's sweater that she used to wear all the time before she passed away. I put on a beanie, put on two beanies three pairs of socks, I put on three pairs of pants, and I put on like two coats, so my grandma's coat and my brother's coat that he had given me. <coughs> and and what my my thing was is to be really warm, but I would tuck my hair in to like the back to where it was like kind of a void so that when we were pushing our carts on the street that no one would recognize me. So that no one would know who it was and so that no one would so that no one would know it's me and make fun of me and so that no one would laugh at me and no one would know when I'm like sitting here and saying that loud again it's emotional because the fuck is that like there was a couch that was behind this ace hardware store that was by this drugstore and we decided to put our tarp up and tie it to a tree it ended up raining that night. I woke up with my toes freezing like almost every night. I would have to let them defrost the next morning before I could go into the drugstore and use paper towels to wash my underarms. I would in showers. I would do the same thing for my pooch. <laughs> and I would do everything I could to make myself look presentable until one of my one of my friends, he walked into the bathroom, he worked there and he was cleaning. And he was like, oh, yo, what's up? Like, and I basically told him, what was going on and I just left and I went back to go behind the the Ace Hardware store where the couch was that we were going to sleep on with the tarp over it and there was a whole bunch of high school kids hanging out on it smoking and that was my bed for the night and I just remember being like fuck like there goes my fucking bed for the night and I can't go anywhere right now and I have no fucking friends and I can't go hang out with them right now like I'm homeless and and it sucks. That was my fucking mindset, you guys. And I, it, it sucks. Like, looking at all these kids that you should be, like, you should be, like, like that right now. And I was not. I even had a, a female friend come up to me. Like, you really come into so many people when you're homeless, though. Like, so much more than when you do have a home. For some reason, like, this girl that I had been best friends with when I was in like fourth grade had came up to me and we started talking and we smoked a cigarette together and I just remember like telling her like yeah like this is what's going on and it was crazy and it was nice that she invited me to go hang out with her friends over at like a food place gym boys and I was like no nah, like I'm okay like because I just felt so like out of place at the time like I wasn't really the age that I felt like I was and at this point, like, I had no idea what my sister was going through. I had no idea even what I was going through because I was so desensitized to what I was fucking experiencing that I was just, like, not even there. I literally was not. I'm not even to make this depressing, but I just want to bring awareness to the situation that just because someone's been through something traumatic doesn't mean I'm fucking lying. And it doesn't mean that it's not real and it didn't happen. And it doesn't mean that it's not as sensitive a subject as it was before. And, you know... To think about it, it really breaks my heart and it breaks my mom's heart. There was a time that we were sleeping under the the tarp behind the Ace Hardware store and the police officer had rolled by and my mom had to hide me because I was underage at the time. I was I was sixteen. And they were looking for somebody named Jordan and I was like, If they found me right now they'd probably take me. Um, but my mom just said no, like there's no Jordan in here and it just felt really like lonely. Because you can't really tell anybody what you're going through at that time because, again, some people don't believe you and some people think that it's just like not that big of a deal and 
I just want to bring awareness sometimes that just because someone's homeless doesn't always mean they're on drugs because in my case I was not and you know I would smoke cigarettes to stay warm and I would smoke weed to stay warm and it worked for the time being or at least that's how it did in my head but I was definitely smoking cigarettes I was definitely smoking weed at the time and I was like trying to stay as warm as possible because waking up with your toes frozen was not fun and then having to stay there the whole day never hanging out with anybody that that really fucking gets you out for a moment there were times that we would have money and go to a, a, a hotel and sometimes it was packed so we would just have to stay until we realized that like spending money me my mom and her boyfriend um we realized at that time that it was too much money to keep spending on a hotel so we just said fuck it we're just gonna sleep outside and i thank god for where i am today but you know i think about this though is i would never be who i am today and have the insights that i do today if i did not experience that so i am thankful that i did because a lot of people like me and my sister would say to each other like Kids in school, like, couldn't even fucking imagine the type of shit that we have to fucking, like, go, like, in quotations, go home to because there was none. <laughs> there was no family. There was no home. There was no food. The only thing that I would eat that whole day is the food that my mom would bring home from work that she worked in the parking lot for and would bring home for me that night. And that's all I would eat for the whole day because we'd also have to be really careful with our money. And... There was times that we ran into like an AMP on the gas station and people would offer us to go and sleep at their like tent city. And I was like, I told my mom, I said, fuck no. I said, I'm not going there and you're not either. I said, no, we're not doing that. Like, that's not who we are and we're not doing that. And I stepped up my name and I said, we're getting the fuck out of here. And if I have to fucking be the one to tell you guys that we're not going to do this, like, I'm not going to do this. Like, no. Yeah, people were literally getting killed in the middle of their sleep because people wanted what they had. I had a laptop, a tablet, my phone. I had all the things that a homeless person shouldn't have because I shouldn't have been in that situation. In the first place, you know, this happened because of me and it, you know, my brother used to say like, oh, it was you and Chris and Paul, that's why we got into this. And I will always kind of have a little bit of resentment towards him for saying some shit like that. But I'm not gonna fucking sit here and, you know, call the fucking shots. <laughs> As if, like, I know everything, but I know it wasn't our fault. And honestly, fuck him for saying some shit like that. And cheers, because we made it out that shit. And honestly, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for being a part of my channel. And you guys are just being good supporters, because that's something that I've always needed my whole life. And I know that it's a fucking hard life, people. And it's not just me that it's hard for. And... It's not a part of me, but it is a part of my past, and I wouldn't be who I am if I didn't experience it, and that is what I'm trying to bring to the light. Mm -hmm. So if you have some experiences that you felt like they fucking murdered you, mm -hmm. it didn't. It didn't. It didn't. Mm -hmm. Trust me, it didn't. And it's okay mm -hmm. to feel like it did, because I was there with you. But we are here together now, oh! and we're going to take a shot, and we're going to take cheers to progress. Mm -hmm. And even if it's just a little bit, you're going to get there. If this is what you need to hear, you're going to get there. And people love you. Someone loves you. God loves you. And it is okay to feel like you hit rock bottom. But trust me. Trust me. Things will get better. And they did for me. They did for my family. And I can only thank God. And some horrible things have happened to my family. But it wasn't our fault. And, and I'm willing to make peace with things that upset me that makes me feel a certain type of way and if that's what I have to do for the rest of my life babe I'm gonna do it you should too because sit and reflect on things and know that it's not your fault is one thing but to think that it is is another and it's not so cheers to that babe because we some we some freaking like we some thugs for real and not the gang thugs I'm talking about we know how to freaking hold ourselves like we know how to fucking get through shit If you don't, you do now. Woo! Cheers. And uh, I hope I see you in my other videos. Let's finish this. Let's not be able to.